I know I've seen lots of comments in the past that were something to the effect of, I have decluttered, I've simplified, why doesn't my house still stay clean? And I, I think it's only now that we're coming out of a particularly busy season that I can fully relate to those comments <laughs> and frustration. Like I walk into this bathroom today and I'm like, why? Why is there any reason that our bathroom would look like this <laughs> right now, right? And so as I've thought about it more and realized what's happening in our own home, I think there's a slight change we can make in how we're looking at decluttering and organizing and maintaining our home that will help you understand why the breakdowns are still occurring, but most importantly, what we can do about it. Like I said, uh, you know, I've, I've alluded to it, but it, just, it was a really busy fall and into this new year, but I'm glad we've gotten back from vacation now and it feels like things are kind of calming down a little bit and settling into place. And it's giving me a little more brain space to look at what has worked in our house over the last few months where all of our systems have really been tested and what hasn't. And like I said, even this morning, I felt frustrated as I walked in here and saw the mess in this bathroom. And so I... In the past, um, whenever I see a question or a comment that is something to the effect of, why can't I stay on top of laundry? Why can't I stay on top of dishes? Don't even get me started with paper clutter, right? Or the kitchen's always a mess or that kind of stuff. My go-to answer has always been inventory. For me, what I have personally found is that if any area of our home wasn't working still, I had to keep reducing the inventory. And I still fully agree with that, but I think we can look at it just a little bit differently that might help it make more sense. So I think step one of getting our house under control, and by under control, I mean something that's easy to maintain, easy to keep picked up and to stay on top of. Step one is to declutter. Step two is to organize. So we don't organize until we've decluttered, right? We all know you can't organize clutter. Um, and if there's too much stuff in there, even if you go to Walmart and get all the new home edit products, like it's still not gonna work. You have to declutter and then you put like some simple organization in place. And then the next step though is where I think a lot of us like forget is then we have to maintain it. I used to think like if I could just declutter my house enough, it would never get messy and I didn't really have to like maintain it so much. But the truth is we still have to maintain it. So even this bathroom, I'm feeling frustrated because no one's been maintaining it, right? That's why it looks like this right now. Well, no one's been maintaining it, but even now as I go to pick it up, I'm also realizing that the inventory has crept back up. We came through winter. I don't know if you have anyone in your household that if anyone gets any kind of illness, they go to the drugstore and get like everything out there. We always, this time of year, like our bins for like medicines and stuff are overflowing. Um, so the inventory has crept up. So as I'm trying to maintain, now I realize I'm having to go back to step one or this part one again and do some more decluttering. So I think, where the breakdown occurs is a lot of times we would like to only have to declutter once and organize once and then the maintenance should just like flow from there very easily without us having to do anything right but that's not the case whenever we're trying to maintain or realizing that it's not easy to maintain anymore then i think we have to go back and look at the first step again and be like do i need to declutter in here again and i know like I know I can just glance in here and be like, we need to declutter again. So then I'm back at step one. And then as we even look at organization, so I've put some simple organization in place, out of sight, big categories, that's how I like to organize. But sometimes we also have to make adjustments to that. Maybe there's stuff in this bathroom that two years ago when I organized it, there wasn't. Like now the girls like doing their hair and having hair stuff or different things. And that wasn't a thing in the past. So then even our organization, which we would kind of hope we can just like put in place once and never have to touch it, often we need to make adjustments to that as well. Okay, so why don't we just go through these three steps quick in this bathroom. So one, again, we're just gonna do a quick declutter. Now, here's the cool part. Because I have decluttered so much in all of the rooms of our house, this could be, this should go pretty quickly and my decluttering muscles are strong, right? Like I have a good grid for what we use and if we're not using, it's gone. So I'm just gonna use a garbage bag. Um, normally I would have a donation box. I don't expect donations in here. I really expect um, that I am just throwing away extra stuff or stuff that we're not using or is expired and probably even like rehoming a few things as well. So I'm just gonna make a quick pass um, through here. And 
because I've organized before, I also kind of know where everything is supposed to go. It, it's already kind of designated. Um, so I'm just kind of putting stuff back where it goes to. Okay, so I know, like, Tom doesn't use this. He got it because they were out of the crude gel that he likes, but he doesn't use this. And so this I'm just gonna toss. What's cool about this is that if we can look at it this way, instead of me getting frustrated at this bathroom and why hasn't anyone picked it up, I can be like, okay, this is a sign to me because this bathroom isn't easy to tidy anymore to keep picked up because normally this bathroom actually is. Um, it's like, okay, nope, I need to check the inventory. So I probably have to do a quick declutter. And then uh, step two, look at my organization. Has anything come in or out that I haven't accounted for that doesn't have a home, right? Everything that's the point of the organization is for it to have a really easy home for it to get to put away. So I, as I'm decluttering and, and straightening up, I'm looking like, okay, is our current organization still working? And then I can look at the maintenance of, okay, have I just not told anyone to come in here and pick up lately? Do we have a system for maintaining this or when it normally gets tidied? And so when I can kind of start to look at it like this and break it down into these pieces, I feel less frustrated because it's not necessarily that I messed up or I did something wrong, right? Because if I really look at what I'm feeling and when I'm feeling frustrated in this bathroom, it's like many of you have expressed, I'm decluttered. <laughs> Why is it my house still easy to keep clean, right? Like, and I walk in here, I'm like, I've done something wrong. Or, you know, I, I try, like, I really want our kids to help clean, right? Like I try and I want them to recognize things and not me always have to be the one telling them, right? But if the inventory's crept up and the organization isn't quite right, then yeah, it's it's realistic that that they haven't naturally just kept it up or any of us have ever put stuff away as we go. And so it, it's not anything I've done wrong, right? I didn't mess up. I haven't not decluttered enough or not organized properly or kept up with our cleaning schedule. It's just simply that we need to go back to the beginning and readdress these different steps in keeping our home. And so that helps me to feel not like such a loser, <laughs> right? Like this, I'm not wrong, you're not wrong, you're doing a good job, like you're really trying. We just might have to like declutter a little more, we might have to adjust our organizing, and then I think the maintenance piece is gonna be a whole lot easier. There's also like some little samples in here that I just know, like, I would like to donate these, but if I only have like two, that's not worth a donation. So for now, I'm just gonna throw it away because it's just not worth managing and no one's gonna look in here thinking that it's in here. And I think what's always interesting to me too, I talked about this a little bit, I have a, drawer, a video called like stuff to drawer theory, that when the inventory creeps up in any of our drawers or cabinets that it's almost like instinctively we don't put stuff away then. Like stuff would just sit out on the vanity or on the floor instead of getting put away. And it's because it's just a little bit too hard to put that stuff away. And so even now, as I'm just kind of making a pass through these drawers and everything, I can already feel like, oh, it's gonna be so easy to put stuff away again now because they're gonna be decluttered and there's more room. And so it's just, I know like there's that phrase like clutter attracts clutter and it's so true though. Like anytime the inventory starts to creep up, that's when these spaces aren't getting picked up and, and put to, back together on a daily basis. Okay, so I have the top drawer looking a whole lot better and now I'm gonna move on down to the bottom drawer. Again, when I walk into this room and I'm like, ugh, I have to like reframe it and be like, okay, I have to look at like the three pieces of the puzzle, the decluttering, organize and maintain, which, which piece or pieces aren't working, get those back in check, and then it's gonna be really easy to, to keep this space maintained again. And again, this like decluttering is only taking, I don't know, a few minutes because we've done the heavy lifting in the past and this is just more like maintenance decluttering. It's, it's actually pretty quick and easy. It doesn't feel painful. I mean, don't get me wrong. There's always things that I'm throwing away. I'm like, why did we buy that, <laughs> right? Like, uh, um, like we're always gonna have that. But I know now, like, just get rid of it. Keeping it's not gonna put the money back in my pocket. It's not gonna make me someday use it or Tom someday use it. So just get rid of it now and not have to worry about it, right? Okay, we have like double <laughs> the space in here now. And so now I know it's gonna be really easy to just wipe this out. But I also, I had gotten just like some Epsom salt when I take a bath, but I didn't have a place for it. Now it's gonna really easily fit in here. So that's what I was talking about with our organization, recognizing is there anything like new or different in this space that I haven't accounted for? 
And so now I easily have a place for that and it is not on the floor next to the vanity anymore. So that was a really easy way to make more room. Okay, so I've done a de quick declutter. I kind of re-looked at all the organization to make sure everything still has a home. And then now I can just do the maintenance part or clean quick and, and tuck everything away quick. So that's what I'm gonna do now. Okay, that honestly took like 10 minutes. It, it really wasn't long and I was feeling so frustrated. And so I think the biggest thing I probably wanna reiterate is that there's nothing wrong with you or your decluttering or anything if it's been breaking down or not working. I think it still surprises me how far I have to go with decluttering to get our house to be really easy to tidy up and to keep and, and to stay on top of. And I know too, one other question I'll answer real quick is, how much like extra do we keep and keep on hand? Or if we come across extras when we're decluttering, how much do we keep? And I think anytime the world gets a little crazy, um, it can bring on that idea of, I need to be prepared for the future, right? Which I'm not against at all. And so kind of the filter that I use, like you saw me throw away Tom's like crew pomade, that wouldn't help us if all hell broke loose or however you want to describe it, right? Um, having like extra hand soap or shampoo, that might be good. Extra hairspray or mousse, like probably I'm not gonna care about that, right? So as I come across extras when I'm decluttering, I just ask myself, would this help me in an emergency situation? And if not, then I'm, I want to let it go because I, again, I need to keep my inventory really low. If I do think it might be something that I could use and that won't expire anytime soon, I want to keep that extra inventory, again, just for me, out of the bathroom. I can't have extra inventory in my kitchen, in my bathroom. Um, it has to be somewhere else. Or again, my bathroom doesn't function well. We don't keep it tidy. It's too hard to put stuff away. And so I would keep that extra inventory in a garage, basement, attic, linen closet even, but not in the actual space itself. And so that's how I look at uh, being prepared, right? We still wanna like be prepared, but not having it totally mess up my spaces where we're living and just trying so hard to stay on top of them. And so I hope if you walk into a space in your house right now that feels a little overwhelming or you're feeling frustrated with, let's break it down into these three pieces. And I think it's gonna help you be able to make a plan and get back on top of it too. So how can we declutter it further? What simple organization can I introduce? And and then a plan for maintaining it. So I hope this helps. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate it more than I can even tell you, but I love you. I hope you have a really good day and I'll see you again soon.